In this video, we are going to talk about the logarithmic function. We will look at the idea behind it and why we need such a function to exist. Then, we will look at some basic properties of this function and give some examples. Suppose we have 2 to the power of x equals 4. How do we solve this equation? Well, we've learned from the previous lessons that we can rewrite the right-hand side as 2 squared. Then, we can bring down our exponents to solve for x. In this case, x equals 2. But can we always do this? Can we always write the right-hand side as a power of the base of the left-hand side? The answer is no. Let's look at this example. If we follow the solution steps that we were using in the previous examples, we should write 4 as a power of 3. But there is no easy way of doing that. So we need something else. Here comes logarithms. The logarithm is defined as the inverse of exponentiation. If we begin with an exponential equation, we can find its inverse by interchanging x and y and then solving for y. But in that case, y goes to the exponent. So how can we solve for y? This is where we define the logarithmic function. It says that if x equals b to the power of y, then y equals the logarithm of x base b. Now, what are the implications of this? Let's look at the previous example and see if we can apply this to solve it. Here, we rewrite the original equation as a logarithmic equation based on its definition. That gives us x equals log of 4 base 3. Now, log of 4 base 3 is something that we can compute. In the early days, people used to have a book that contain the logarithms of numbers. Today, we have calculators and computers that easily computes the logarithms. This means that whatever log 4 base 3 is, then that is the solution to the original equation. Now, let's try to convert an exponential equation into its logarithmic form. This will enable us to get to familiarize the conversion process. For example, 125 equals 5 to the power of x will give us what? Now, I want you to pause the video and then solve on your own to see if your answer is correct. For number 2, we have 3 to the power of y equals 27. Again, pause the video and try to work this out. Here are the basic properties of logarithmic function. Log of 1 base b equals 0, and it doesn't matter what b is, okay? Well, as long as b is greater than 0, not equal to 1. Log of b to the power of x base b equals x. Now, let's use the basic properties of logarithms to evaluate some logarithmic expressions. Log of 1 base 5 is 0, because log of 1 base b for any b is equal to 0. Log of 1 is equal to 0. Now, in this case, you might ask, what is the base for this logarithm? Well, when the base is not written, it is assumed that the base is 10. Log of 125 base 5 gives us log of 5 cubed, because we can write 125 as 5 cubed. And according to the second property, that should equal 3. Now, here are some fun facts. A logarithm that has a base of 10 is commonly called the common logarithm. In a common logarithm, the base 10 is no longer written. A logarithm that has a base of e is commonly called the natural logarithm. In a natural logarithm, the base e is no longer written, and log is replaced by ln, as in ln of x. 
Now, let's look at some laws of logarithms. I want to point out that there are other laws of logarithms that are not included here. These are just some of the basics. The first law is the product rule. It says that the log of m times n base b is equal to the log of m base b plus the log of n base b. Then the next rule is the quotient rule. It says that the log of m divided by n base b is equal to the log of m base b minus log of n base b. Then we have the power rule. The power rule says the log of x to the power of m base b is equal to m times the logarithm of x base b. Let's put the laws of the logarithms to work. Expand the following expressions using the laws of logarithms. So let's start with log of x times y times z. So all we need to do is apply the product rule. So log of x times y times z is just equal to the log of x plus the log of y plus the log of z. That's it. So for number 2, we have ln of 8 times x squared. First, we apply the product rule. So we have ln of 8 times x squared is equal to ln of 8 plus ln of x squared. Then we apply the power rule. So that equals to ln of 8 plus 2 times ln of x. And that's it. Let's look at our third example. The log of x times y divided by z squared base 3. So first, we apply the quotient rule. We can write it as log of x times y base 3 minus the log of z squared base 3. And then we apply the product and power rule simultaneously. So we will get log of x base 3 plus log of y base 3 minus 2 times log of z base 3.